So this is a tricky SUVAC question. It starts off by telling us that small water drops leave a tap with zero velocity at intervals of 0.2 seconds. They then fall freely a distance of 0.8 meters to reach a horizontal surface. We're trying to work out how far the drop falls when the previous drop hits the surface. Okay, so let's start out by drawing out a SUVAT table and thinking about what we have, what we don't have. So let's define the downwards direction to be positive. Remember that for SUVAT we always have to define a positive direction and stick with it throughout the rest of the question. So we know that the drops leave with zero velocity. We're trying to work out how far the drop has fallen. So there's two drops in this question. The first drop is the one that we're trying to work out distance for. And then there's the previous drop as well. So I'll call the drop that we're trying to work out the distance for drop one, and then I'll call the previous drop, drop two. So we don't have the final speed of drop one. We don't know what that is. And we also don't have the time. We don't know how long it's been falling for. We know what the acceleration is. Acceleration would just be 9.81. So in order to do SUVAT, we have to have three variables known. And only then can we work out a fourth. We only have two right now, so we have to work out one more. So let's see if we can work out either V or T in order to then work out what S is by considering this scenario. So let's draw a diagram. Here's the tap. We're told that the previous drop hits the surface, so, so here is drop two. And let's say that drop one is somewhere over here. We're trying to work out what this distance here is from the tap to drop one. And we know that drop two is a distance of 0 0.8 meters from the ground. We also know the time interval between drops is 0 0.2 seconds. So if I put times on the left-hand side, this is 0 0.2 seconds. So if we consider drop two and work out how long it takes for drop two to hit the ground, then we can work out how long drop one has fallen for by taking this time away from this time. And then we will be able to put a time value in here to then work out displacement. Okay, so let's work out how long it takes drop two to fall the full distance of 0 0.8. This here was for drop one, so we're gonna to have to draw out a separate SUVAT table. So for drop two, the distance is still 0 0.8. It's still falling from rest. Final speed we don't know. We're not interested in that. Acceleration is 9.81. Again, I'm considering downwards to be positive still. And the time is what we're interested in. So we can use S is equal to ut plus a half at squared. The distance fallen is 0 0.8. ut is just going to be 0. So this is then a half times 9.81 times t squared. So if I bring the 2 to the left, this becomes 1.6. Then divide by the 9.81. This is now t squared. Square root and we get 0 0.404 seconds. So let's represent this on our diagram. That is what we've just worked out there is the time for drop two to hit the surface. So that was 0 0.404 seconds. And if that is 0 0.404, this time, if we take away the two, must therefore be 0 0.204 seconds. So that's how long drop one has been falling for from the tap. So we can now put that into our SUVAT table for drop one. So this time that we have here will be 0 0.204 seconds. And now we can work out drop one's distance fallen. We can use S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. U again is zero. So then the distance fallen would be a half times 9.81 times t squared. And this gives us 0 0.204 meters. So that will be B.